It's been a long time since I've done a six pound roast uh, video in a BC5, but I'm going to do that today to show you uh, that it can be done. The key thing with the six pound roast is that the beans, you don't want the beans to get too big after they go in the first crack. Some, some do, and the problem is they begin to fill the cooling tray and could overflow it because the mixing arms lift the uh, beans up a couple inches as they spin around. I'm not 100% sure on this. This is uh, Mexico Chiapas, which actually has a pretty good size bean. But they're six pounds, and we're going to go ahead and give it a test. And I'm going to run the machine so the temperature drop down just a little bit for a charge. Uh, but uh, we're going to show you that it can be done. I'm not going to do a videotape this entire thing because my I just got done doing three videos and my camera's getting hot but I'm going to take you through part of it just so you'll see in a moment. Alright we got six pounds of Chiapas. I'm going to go ahead and uh, start my uh, artisan and I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've got, well I'll tell you about all that in a minute, but I've got the uh, Get the timer going. Go ahead and charge six pounds of Mexico Chiapas. And we charge it at somewhere close to around, I don't know, I'll check on the uh, artisan, but it's probably close to 400 pounds. I won't do a soak on a five or six pound roast generally uh, where I run it without the gas uh, because that's just a big full load for a smaller roaster like this. I mean, the maximum amount for this roaster is supposed to be five pounds, but a lot of folks are doing five and a half, and on some being six pounds. This is my first time trying it on a Chiapas. Anyway, with that said, our charge temperature, uh, that's not right, it was probably around 400 pounds in reality. Um, we're going to see where the turnaround is. Should be soon. We're at a minute and seven seconds. Usually about a minute and 15, no more than a minute and a half. I do have my. Uh, yeah, it's about ready to turn around right now. Here we go. 179.6, maybe. That's why. Okay. No. Okay, 177.3 in a minute and 29 seconds. I'm actually going to turn up my gas a little bit higher since it is six pounds. I had it on 3.2 or 3.3 kPa. I'm actually going to turn it up to about 3.9 and watch how long it takes for the uh, drying phase to end. My guess is it's probably going to take a little over five minutes. Yeah, right now. Artisan's still trying to figure out how long it's going to take. And I'm going to bump up my airflow a little bit. I'm going to bump it up to about two and a half. That way we'll bring in uh, more air. It should speed up the rate of rise at this point because the roaster is thoroughly uh, preheated. So my camera is too, so I'm going to turn this off and I'll tune you in when we get to the end of the drying phase. Okay, so we're about at the end of drying phase and it took longer than I thought. Um, perhaps I needed to preheat the roaster a little hotter than it was because there was some downtime between uh, the last roast and this one. But we're at 320 at 6 minutes and 40 seconds. At this rate, we will probably finish this roast at, uh, if I kept it, everything set as is, it would probably be at about nine minutes. I don't want to necessarily finish it that quite that fast. So I'm going to kick back my gas just a little bit, three and a little under three and a half. I'm going to bump up my airflow. I'm now up to a four and a half, which is registering about eight on the uh, mag airflow gauge. And I'll, I'll bring this in so you can get a closer view of what's going on. Okay, hopefully you can see we're at about eight minutes. We're uh, 
357 degrees while it's 8 minutes now, 358 degrees. Our airflow is at 467. I'm set at about 4 and 3 fourths on the airflow. I'm going to bump it up to 5 and a half. Uh, I haven't spoke much about our drum speaks. I haven't changed it through any of the last several rows. And it's been at about 8. And I'm going to leave it there. Um, in a minute, I'll bring you over to the front here, but uh, yeah, they're a, a nice light brown bean. Keep in mind, with six pounds in this five pound roaster, you may have to bump up the air for a little bit higher because there's probably going to be a, a decent amount of chaff here. Yeah, there still appears to be a decent amount of chaff on the beans. Alrighty, we're at about 385 and I'm beginning to hear first crack. Nine minutes, 387. I'm going to slow down my uh, gas pressure to about two and three fourths, pump up my air flow. I don't think I need to go much past about six on the air flow. It's registering about 28 on our Magnahela cage. And that will vary on your roaster depending on your exhaust setup. If you've got a, a long exhaust setup or with a lot of angles, uh, it's going to affect the air flowing through the drum. And that's why a magnahelic gauge is so important because uh, it lets you know what's going on not only inside the roaster, but uh, how your uh, external exhaust affects that. Yeah, so here we are. We've actually bumped up over 30 on the uh, magnahelic gauge. We're at 410 degrees. We're going into a rapid first crack. I'm going to bring you over to the front now. Okay, hopefully you can see. Uh, we're at uh, 10 minutes, 25 seconds, 421 degrees. A rapid first crack. I'm actually going to cut back the gas more. I'm going to cut it back to a little less than two. I'm going to leave my airflow at six. And we're at 427, well, 428, 1045 on the time. I'm going to make this an 11 minute roast and probably take it up to about 435 degrees. Yeah, the chaff's being pulled out nicely at uh, the airflow at six. Okay, so we're at 11 minutes, 10 seconds. My gas is going off. My mixing's going on. It's 440, 11 minutes, 15 seconds. And the hot air was about 468. Okay, hopefully you can see that and it's not over or underexposed. A very nice, even six pound roast. And as you can see with the Mexico Chiapas, even with the uh, mixing arms lifting it a couple inches, it's still not uh, in any risk of overflowing the cooling tray. Because if you overflow the cooling tray and you drum, dump out a half pound or pound, there was no sense in doing that extra half pound or pound, even if the drum of the roaster could handle it. But we can see in this case, there's six pounds. It'll be interesting to see what the, uh, with the, the loss of moisture, how much the six pound roast will purport to be uh, weight-wise when we weigh it. Wouldn't that be cool if it ended up being right at five pounds, knowing that you could do a five-pound final product and do five-pound bags with your BC5 roaster? We'll see. Just out of curiosity, I wanted to see uh, how much the... Uh, Six pounds ended up being, let me tear up my skill. Okay. And see how much the coffee ended up being. So four pounds, four, 15 ounces. I don't know if you can see that. So just one ounce less than five pounds. So uh, basically, depending on how dark you take the roast, and I think I took that up to about four 40, so if you went a little lighter, 430, you can get five pound roast finished product out of a BC5 by roasting six pounds. So that's pretty cool.